Last week on Legally Kidnapped. Good evening. Two top stories this week. First, in New York, a Staten Island mom hits the child protective industry with a $900 trillion lawsuit after CPS agents improperly snatch and hold her kid hostage in foster care for more than three years. Then in Washington, a husband with missing Utah women blows up his house with himself and his two boys inside during a supervised visit after pushing the CPS agent out of the door and taking a hatchet to the kids. In California, the Children's Law Center is suing over over a Los Angeles judge's ruling to allow the media into juvenile court proceedings. A group of California foster kids misled and brainwashed by the child protective industry protest that same decision. The Kentucky child protective industry continues to fight a judge's decision to release child abuse and neglect death records where CPS was involved, and the judge criticizes that fight, saying that without the records, the public can't be ensured that the state is properly protecting children. Then the head of the child protective industry in Kentucky quits over several controversies, including the brief refusal to comply with the same judge's orders. In Connecticut, the child protective industry says that they will no longer be focusing on minor reports of neglect is what they're calling a part of a shift away from the traditional adversarial approach. A new study says that Nebraska should stick with privatization of their child welfare system regardless of inflated cost rather than re-implementing the failed policies of the past and focusing on other reforms instead. In Oklahoma, the overuse of foster care shelters and group homes is criticized for exceeding the national standards. The state of Maine is considering offering a cash reward to anybody who reports Medicaid fraud, except in child welfare, of course. And Texas lawmakers are trying to pass a bill to toughen criminal penalties for parents who chain, cage, or tie up their children for long periods of time. Florida officials are pushing the adoptions of African-American foster kids this month, featuring a different kid every day during Black History Month. The Virginia State Senate passes an anti-gay adoption bill that will protect religious beliefs in regards to faith-based foster care and adoption agencies. And the Catholic Church takes on President Barack Obama over having to provide birth control to their employees as part of a new federal health care requirement. In Nebraska this week, the legislature considers a bill to monitor the medication prescriptions for foster kids. A new study finds that Georgia's foster kids are over-medicated too. In Florida, it is revealed that foster kids are three times more likely to be fed dangerous psychotropic drugs than non-foster kids. This newly released information has DCF on the defense as they cover to scramble their asses. In the Florida Florida State Legislature apparently has no intention of doing anything about it. The U.S. Office of Inspector General launches a website this week listing the names of dads who are behind on their child support payments. The FBI admits that they are having a hard time tracking sexual predators on Facebook, and the mom of one victim is calling it a devil's playground. In Indiana, calls to the child ombudsman complaining about the child protective industry increased 42% from 2010 to 2011, as reports of child abuse and neglect that were determined not to merit further investigation has more than doubled since the child protective industry moved to a centralized call center. And in New Mexico, the child abuse hotline goes down this past Thursday from 2.45 p.m. till shortly after 4, sending CPS into a total panic over missed opportunities. In Austria this week, some ex-foster kids are claiming that they were giving malaria injections to treat psychological disorders. Russian officials are considering putting a halt to international adoptions of Russian orphans to the United States, setting an incessant string of crimes committed by American adoptive parents where the justice system gave them nothing but a slap on the wrist. In Israel, a judge rules that an adopted man has the right to know the identity of his biological mother who he has been trying to find for 14 years. The government of the Philippines is urging people to adopt kids legally. And in India, a probe finds a sex racket going on at another orphanage. In Australia, two parents are fighting for the right to put their 11-year-old boy who identifies as a girl on hormone treatment to suppress male puberty and induce feminine character Characteristics and don't think that they should have to get the court's permission to do so. In Canada, a 63-year-old foster parent from Prince Edward Island is charged with sexual assault, sexual interference, and sexual exploitation of a foster child. In Saskatchewan, the government makes changes to the child welfare to ensure compliance with court orders after a judge scolds CPS agents for ignoring his orders to arrange regular visits between a mother and her children. And the Canadian government is discriminating against First Nations children by giving them less money for education, health, and child welfare services than their fellow Canadians. In England this week, grandparents win the right to keep in touch with their grandkids in divorce and child welfare cases in a shake-up of the family justice system. Fear of the next baby pee-style failure is driving an increase of record numbers of children into the foster care in the UK, with figures hitting 10,000 stolen kids in England in a single year, and for the first time ever having 900 kids removed from their homes in a single month, apparently making UK the most likely to snatch your children. A father's rights group protests outside the home 
of a British MP demanding equal access to their kids after divorce. In entertainment news this week, news reports surfaced claiming that CPS is recommending supervised visits for Halle Berry's baby daddy. Then Radar Online reports that this is not the case. And the ex-wife of singer Usher wants him to pay her legal fees so that she can strip him of child custody too. In sports, former Penn State coach Jerry Sandusky is accusing his neighbors of turning on him over sex abuse allegation and goes to court over his bail conditions with prosecutors worrying about him standing out on the back porch watching kids play on the playground. And his lawyers are accusing prosecutors of withholding evidence in the case. A gay couple from Australia who are accused of being part of an international pedophile ring have their six-year-old taken by CPS agents in Los Angeles, California. A foster father in Montana who is accused of child molestation and child porn has his bail conditions modified, forcing him to wear an electronic monitoring device and give up his passport. A Colorado foster parent is accused of sending pornographic photos to his 17-year-old foster son. In Illinois, a foster Foster dad who cared for 75 kids over 20 years gets busted for sexually abusing two kids over a 13-year period. And a Florida foster father finds himself accused of sexual abuse, too. A Florida woman gets another delay in her trial after being accused of murdering her two-year-old adopted daughter three years ago. New details are released in the case of Nubia Barahona when her twin brother reveals the abuse that led up to her death at the hands of their adopted father. A Florida CPS agent is charged with 33 counts of falsifying records, including logging visits that he didn't actually make to abused and neglected children. And in North Carolina, a CPS agent and her supervisor are indicted after being charged with falsifying records in order to cover their asses in regards to their own screw-ups in the death probe of a one-year-old girl. In Oklahoma, the judge accused in an adoption scam where she continued to collect adoption subsidies for kids who she had passed off on to someone else resigns from the bench. In Rhode Island, a wounded war hero admits to killing a baby girl he was trying to adopt because she was crying. In Virginia, the Social Service Commissioner is set to review the death of an infant at the hands of his adopted mother. Then he apologizes for the lack of oversight in the case. And a 14-year-old girl assaults a staff member at a California group home. In Alaska, an adopted kid is suing the child protective industry and the police department for failing to thoroughly investigate an adopted mother who abused him. An Orange County, California prosecutor grills a CPS agent who accused him of abusing his adopted daughter. A California school finds itself embroiled in a child sex abuse scandal and ends up replacing the entire staff after police arrest two teachers for sexually abusing students. And in Georgia, a military family fights for custody of their child due to an erroneous drug test that was performed on the mother in secret. In Maine this week, the Cumberland County District Attorney is being sued by a dad over her improper role in a child custody dispute over a five-year-old girl. A small Maine business gets a free photo opportunity and newspaper write-up for hosting a heart gallery by displaying pretty pictures pictures of kids in the state who are available for adoption and currently in possession of the child protective industry. In Utah, a man continues to fight for his kid who is illegally adopted out from under him with no consideration for the rights of biological fathers. And finally, tonight, a Colorado family sues a psychiatric facility after an unlicensed therapist took their son off of medication while another employee likened the boy to serial killer Ted Bundy. For these stories and all the latest dirt on the child protective industry, visit www.legallykidnapped.com. And until next week, this is Baby LK, over and out.